Welcome to the second episode of Filibusted. This is comedians getting together to talk about serious issues and trying to keep a straight face while they do it. A uh, huge thank you to Brian Doney for recording and filming this episode. My name is Griffin Browning. This is the social issues episode of Filibusted, where we're going to talk about when society, culture, and politics collide. Uh, before we introduce our panelists, I'd like to introduce Pat Deering, who was a panelist on our previous episode, and we realized very quickly that he was the smartest guy in the room, also one of the sharpest dress, and uh, we kind of brought him on in a new role as our fact guy, uh, kind of keeping our panelists honest, and at the end of the show, he's also going to be announcing who he thought was the winner of the episode based on whatever criteria they want, and then we have a little surprise from that person. So jumping right into introducing our panelists, I want to start with uh, Jesse Huber. Uh, tell us a little bit about where your social and political beliefs come from. Well, hi. Thank you for having me on. Uh, I have to say, you know, uh, I'm really golden rule. You know, treat others the way you want to be treated. I'm very open-minded to a lot of people's views and opinions. You know, I'm not one to criticize them. So I'm always willing to hear anybody out for what they believe in and, uh, you know, just take a logical approach to it. All right. Thank you. Uh, up next, uh, a welcome back to Cecil Heyman, who was also on our first episode. Cecil, tell us a little bit about what you think. Uh, my name is Cecil Heyman. Uh, I'm a Sagittarius. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm pretty, I kind of differ on political issues based on the issue. Um, I don't really fall in line with any one party. I was a Republican last podcast. Probably won't be doing that this podcast. <laughs> uh, that's it. All right, up next, uh, we have Amber Falter. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, I guess most of my social and political views come from um, being raised by mostly men. Um, and I think that shaped a lot of how I think about the world and fairness. Um, in terms of anything else, I think that's it. All right, well, we, we will definitely get into some of that on this episode. Uh, and lastly, we have Bianca Moore. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, I think both, most of my political views, um, some of them exist. Um, I guess if I had to <laughs> choose, I would have to um, portray myself as liberal. Most of my social issues come from being trying to survive as a black person and a woman. So whatever tries to, um, whatever protects me in either one of those ways, I'm usually with that side. So that's about all I have on that. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here, and we'll jump right into it. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is the LGBT community a little bit. Um, obviously, one of the biggest things that happened last year was in June of last year, the Supreme Court basically ruled to guarantee equal right to marry to uh, same-sex couples. Um, this kind of came out of nowhere and was sort of a surprise to a lot of the country. Um, the way I'd kind of like to frame that conversation is it was a 5-4 ruling. Uh, so 5 for it, 4 against. Uh, and the first question I'd like to pose to you guys is, do you think that that split of 5-4 accurately represents the feeling of the American people? And I'm actually going to open this up to Bianca first. I do not. Um, I, at least I don't think that represents the public face of people. I think if people... Um, try <clears throat> if people are against LGBT things, but they live in a predominantly um, po LGBT positive town, such as like Columbus. If you're out at Barrel 44 down the street, and you're not going to say, "Well, I hate the faggots," just out of nowhere. <laughs> um, however, I think it is a correct um, depiction of the private lives of a lot of people um, who just don't see it as right or just not the right thing to do. Um, and this is based on their religions or how they were viewed or it just makes them feel icky inside. So um, you think that there's a difference between the way that people socially represent themselves and the way that they actually think? Absolutely. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, would anyone agree with that? If anyone wants to jump in? Cecil, go for it. Yeah, I'd say you're, you're right. Because we live in this bubble that is Columbus that's like basically the San Francisco of the Midwest. And like pretty much even growing up younger, like it was never like that like frowned upon to be gay but if you travel like a little bit outside of the city it's a whole nother world so yeah i'd say she's right okay Your ruling kind of reflects i no. guess what you know go ahead i was gonna say i see i'm i live out of t i used to live out of town i used to live in youngstown and i and uh i, I agree with you cecil it's a bubble here you know what i mean i coming here um you know i it's very much you know free to be who you are where i came from uh you know 
it's a little bit more Republican and, uh, you know, and conservative. So, I mean, to come out to your parents, it was a much bigger deal up there than it is down here. Like, if you came out to them, people were asking, like, so where are you living now? You know what I mean? They're asking questions like that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, um, the Supreme Court decision was, it was kind of a surprise. Um, it, it really kind of came out of nowhere. And uh, I kind of want to ask you guys, do any of you think that the Supreme Court kind of overstepped its bounds a little bit and was trying to kind of create social change that maybe America wasn't ready for yet? Uh, well, I mean, uh, it depends on, uh, you know, did they, a case was probably was brought to them. It probably had something, you know, because a lot of the cases that go there, uh, I know in the past, you know, they weren't always about exactly about the marriage part. I know back in 2014, if I'm uh, dating back correctly, uh, it was about um, it was about a gay couple. Uh, one had died and one was a widow and uh, she could not uh, receive the things that uh, that her, her loved one that died left to her because she had to pay a tax that a regular married couple would not have to pay. So, you know, it, it's really coming down to now trying to make all the marriage equal. You know, everything, every aspect about it so it's no different and it's not dependent upon if you're a man and a man or a woman and a woman. It's just, you're in a marriage, it's the same way for everybody. So, I mean, to step in and do that, I think it's, a, it's the right thing to do. I mean, why shouldn't it be as equal as the next person? Okay, gotcha. Uh, so you, to, yeah, go ahead. No, step, Jump please. in there. Just a uh, yeah. The, the case you're uh, referring to is the the Windsor uh, mm. decision. Yes, and um, rusty with it. <laughs> and while there, you know, there definitely were tax implications um, for the uh, surviving spouse, but the question the Supreme Court really answered in the Windsor decision was: Do states have to recognize legal marriages performed in other states? Um, oh, okay. If that marriage is not necessarily legal in the new state, yes. Um, the Supreme Court, and at that point in time, decided they did. Um, mm -hmm. So while they didn't completely throw out the marriage protection uh, legislation the United yeah. States had at that time, they did overturn turn the portion that allowed a state that didn't recognize same-sex marriage to deny the marriage rights of someone who was married in a different state. Okay. Um, for example, like New York to Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's just the, the Windsor case in a nutshell. No, no, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Gotcha. Um, kind of shifting focuses a little bit, but it's uh, something that's, that's obviously really related to the LGBT community is I want to talk a little bit about sexuality and reproductive rights. Uh, a good place to start there, I think, is the fight against Planned Parenthood that has uh, kind of been dominating the news, at least in the last, you know, six months. Um, basically, the argument here is that there should be a removal of funding against Planned Parenthood. Um, and this fight almost kind of culminated in a shooting that occurred at a Planned Parenthood location where basically one police officer was killed, two civilians were killed, and nine more were injured. Um, so I'd kind of like to turn it over to Amber here. Um, basically, how did we get to this point where we're having shootings occurring at Planned Parenthood as sort of a protest against Planned Parenthood? Um, I think a lot of the positive... Um, forces in the Planned Parenthood community, like the people that are um, so supportive of the women that need the health care that, that go there and seek care from them. I think the way that even social media is kind of making it a lot easier for their voices to be heard, I think it's very difficult for um, people that are against Planned Parenthood and against the you know, services they do provide. I think it's hard for them to see all that online. And I think it's almost just given them, it fueled them in a way that like, they're like, wow, I can't believe that. I think it's just more apparent in the media and everything, like uh, the way that people are supporting Planned Parenthood. And so I feel like it almost fueled this huge hatred, like parade um, that led this guy to do that. So could you say that like it was almost an act of desperation? I, uh, reading his interviews and like the things he would mm. say himself, like it was, he would tie it so deeply to his um, roots in Christianity and everything with that. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I think like he was just was trying to act like he was sent from God to yeah. save all these wombs or something. <laughs> I, I guess what I'd like to ask you then is, and this is to anyone that, that wants to jump on this, um, do you ever think that there's a situation where an act of violence or even something close to that, you could ever defend that based on an ideology. This is what I think is stupid about the Planned Parenthood thing. Um, the fact that he went to Planned Parenthood in efforts to, um, like, 
um, express violence towards people who work there because they're killing babies. He's going and potentially killing women with babies. Like, it just <laughs> doesn't make any fucking sense. So I can't even, There, it's just idiocy. It's redundant, and I can't say, like, oh, oh Lord Jesus sent me to do this. No, you're just fucking stupid. Uh, like, he's, like, worse than those people you see with the fucking aluminum foil on their heads walking down High Street. Like, it's just so <laughs> stupid because you're literally killing someone to speak out against killing fetuses. Uh, so, Cecil, yeah. I think on the last episode, you labeled yourself as very in favor of abortions. Yeah, um, I think we need do more you, of Do them. you want, you want to weigh in yeah. on this? I think with this particular... So the whole thing with the Planned Parenthood shooting is I think it's not unfair to say that he was somewhat inspired by Fox News right-wing media with the whole, they are ripping babies apart to if see how their be. arms work or whatever. I think this guy was going to be a Unabomber had he had the intelligence and education to make bombs. So, like, <laughs> I mean, he lived, like, in a trailer in the middle of, like, nowhere. I mean, I, I think he just saw this on his, like, you know, coat hanger antenna TV and decided this was his cause. Right. It could have been about anything. Like, I feel like if the media was like, oh, Oreos are... Like raping babies, he'd be like, "I'm gonna destroy Oreos today," and like that he would was just be looking a for a reason to, yeah. to act out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the things he all said, for God. The things he said were absolutely. I, I was reading one of the things, and correct me if I'm wrong. I, he said he was a warrior for the babies. Like that was one of the things he went out and said. Like it just sounds but like the babies are dead now because you <laughs> killed their mothers. <laughs> That's what I don't get. That's the dumbest thing ever, and I feel un. And the people that supported him it just make me vomit. Like I was like, I'm glad he went there, and then he killed all those people, and the, the, because he's an agent for God, and he's trying to f- protect future babies. These babies died for his <laughs> sins, uh, well, but future babies are okay. We are going to talk about kind of public support for individuals like that uh, in in just a little bit here. Um, one thing that that I want to talk about before we move on from Planned Parenthood. Um, I, Cecil uh, or Cecile Richards, uh, the president of Planned Parenthood, basically went before a government oversight committee, and uh, I know, uh, yeah, I got, a little, um, got a little pissed off there. For yeah. a second. <laughs> you would, you would never be president of Planned Parenthood. Um, never say never. Basically, she went before a government <laughs> oversight committee and had to defend the actions of Planned Parenthood, and uh, a lot of the reason for that was that there was so-called video evidence of Planned Parenthood selling aborted fetuses or parts of aborted fetuses for a profit. Um, also, they had to defend their you know, use of abortion services, which, I mean, by most accounts, and Pat, you can jump in here too, that only accounts for about 3% of what they do as a whole. Yeah, as far as um, their overall funding goes, only about 3% of their overall funding is utilized for abortion services, and none of their, um, their federal money is utilized for abortion services. That's actually illegal per the Hyde Amendment. So, um, you know, they're already not using federal dollars for abortion services. I've been to, personally been to Planned Parenthood four times, and 0% of those times were for abortions. (laughs) So if anyone thinks Planned Parenthood is strictly for abortions, I can personally say 0% of the time I've been to Planned Parenthood has been for abortions. But most of the time, every time So far. It's just weird. Yeah. Like every time you hear someone talk about it, it has this like stigma of abortion over it. You know what I mean? Like if you ever hear someone say, hey, "I just went to plan por- uh, Planned Parenthood," you think abortion already in your head. You know? Yeah, I just, that's what I I just was... think they're poor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was growing um, because I lived right around the corner from a Planned Parenthood, um, and my stepdad actually told me that my mom went there and got rid of my younger brother oh. or sister. Oh my god! Oh so, I have an aborted younger brother too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so We're bringing Yay. families together here. Uh, but yeah, besides him being a piece of shit, that's what um, <laughs> I had that stigma for a while too, until I actually went for services I needed. I, I guess my question to you then is, um, basically, I, I think th- those are two of the biggest arguments that was used against Planned Parenthood, this video evidence of selling fetuses, also that they're, you know, providing abortion services. Both of those has, have essentially been proved false. Uh, Mm. The video evidence especially, there's kind of no connection to Planned Parenthood. So why then do you think that people are still using both of those things as evidence against Planned Parenthood to remove its funding? Where, like, where is the drive for that in in American thought? There we go. (laughs) Uh, Religion is the biggest con in this country. 
Um, and they, um, if you put Jesus behind anything, you can use that train all the way the fuck home. So, so Jesus outweighs facts. Um, yes. Okay. All every single time. Have you not read the New Testament? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, m- moving on from there, uh, this is just and right before we move on from uh, from kind of this this part of it, um, I do want to talk just a little bit about youth sexuality. Um, I think that there's kind of a rising change in youth sexual orientation. Uh, you hear a lot like words like pansexuality or polyamorous relationships being thrown around. Uh, basically, pansexuality is uh, a form of sexuality that is not tied to gender or uh, really anything. It's just it, when you see something you like, you know you like it. Uh, polyamorous relationships are basically the idea of open relationships. Um, even with the rise of things like Tinder, which is kind of based around the idea of one night stands or couple night stands. Um, I guess I want to talk a little bit about what you think the impact on sexual education for youth should be based on these things. Like, do you think that we should be taking into account things like promiscuity or having multiple partners or people that are much more prone to bisexuality or, you know, different types of relationships? What do you think the response should be to that? Um, This is an issue I actually feel very strongly about because I'm a bisexual person that tried to get shoved in a heterosexual box. Um, I believe sexuality and sexual education is so important. Um, And the thing is, polyamory is like it's not spiking in like popularity or anything. We just didn't have a word for it. Um, Because they've been doing this like literally since Greece. Like this is things that have been happening. I don't think the correct response is if we tell them not to touch each other, then they won't touch each other because it's a fact that that doesn't work. Um, so I don't. I think we need to expand education as far as sexual education in health classes. Um, I don't think you should be handing out condoms to third graders, <laughs> but I don't think you should expect eighth graders to go to a dance and expect Jesus to be in between them. You know. <laughs> Actually, I I, I want to jump in. Uh, what. You personally, when do you think that we should start handing out condoms? Uh, I believe, uh, as far as my public school education told me, you should really be sitting down having the birds and the bees talks by, like, eighth grade. Mm. Amber, what do you think about that? Um, I think eighth grade's a good number. I got, like, this guy, like, thought he fingered me once in eighth grade. (laughs) And I was like, oh, that wasn't where you were touching. (laughs) Uh, I was like, this boy needs some sexual education. Okay, well, those are different types of guides, but I do want to get that's like rubbing the side of my lip for 15 mm-hmm. minutes is not fingering. So somebody, I think that's a separate talk. You don't have to have that in a textbook, but I think someone should tell you. Do you? And I it, do. It, I'll, I'll open this up to the to the guys on the panel. Um, do you think that sexual education should evolve to include things like taking into account pleasure or sex for non reproductive reasons? Do you think that, that that would be helpful? I think it would certainly be helpful. I don't think that that is the direction that our country is heading in. Like, I took several sociology sex classes in college, and they do get into that. Um, I think that that would be helpful, and that's something that should be. But, like, at this point, if we could just um, improve our, like, anatomy lessons. I didn't learn that women peed out of their vagina until freshman year of college. <laughs> like, I remember when everyone in the hall figured out that out. I was like, how, how did you never- learn? <laughs> oh, uh, some girl was talking about how some like, girl was peeing standing up in the bathroom and I was like how wouldn't it just go everywhere and they're like no and then they explained it and then I got every dude in the hall and was like did you fucking know about this <laughs> <laughs> no one did I do also want to say I also think that um, books because I know I haven't been in school for a while but um, at least in the health education books I read it's like um, sex is something you do intercourse actually intercourse is something you do when you are in love with someone and you're married and you've walked down the aisle and he carried you over the threshold and it was so romantic like that's not how sex happens right i'm like 20 percent of the kids in here are going to wait until marriage maybe <laughs> like that that could be a completely wrong number i know it is a wrong number because i went to public school <laughs> i want to read i agree with that because it was um i do feel in a weird way when i was getting this education um at a younger age where I, like not as many people are sexually active as a lot of hormonal like changes like the seventh to eighth grade kind of sexual ed. Um, it, I feel like there was still like this weird um, religion religious influence on it, mm-hmm. where it it was like abstinence is key and like you have you have to be married or like 
feel these feelings. I'm like, ah, uh, no. But at the same, oh, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, I went to a Catholic school, so <laughs> I did, oh, yeah, oh. so the, the, it was a terrible sex ed class, and like, it, it, they would push the whole, like, stay, keep Jesus between you and her, you mm. know, all that stuff, and nobody would listen. Like, everybody left there and was like, oh, listen, this shit, you know what I mean? And it, 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 they don't teach you. They don't teach you anything, because like, you mentioned the idea of uh, teaching pleasure, you know what I mean? Teaching, I mean, sign me up. I, I mean, I'll learn, you know what I mean? But it's like, <laughs> they don't teach, they, all they teach is like, look, this is a vagina, this is a penis, all right, break, let's go mm-hmm. pray a little bit, you know? So, I mean... It, it's lack of education, seriously. No, I, 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 I kind of feel that because, like, I feel like when, especially, like, you're raised that way, like, some of the best fucks I've had have been, like, really religious boys. Like, you kind of just go wild. Oh, like, yeah, you do. Straight into college. <laughs> and, like, that they're like, hey, that was, yeah, they're like, oh, hey, yeah. that was great, but I got to go to church. I'm like, oh, gross. <laughs> well, I didn't do that part of the end because <laughs> my grandmother always wanted to sit in the front row at church. Oh. I could never do that. So you're like, save me a seat, Grandma. I got to come first. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, the, like, um, it's t- taught abstinence is um, taught in schools, but then at the same time, you have men pulling their sons as out now. Like, all these women are yours. You deserve mm-hmm. all of them. I'm like, who are these bitches you're fucking that you don't want them? You don't want them to be abstinent, but you want them to put out. Like, I don't understand the logic by them. They're all my, whores. My, my, my dad never either. had that talk with me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, literally, like with me and my cousins. Like, it's like Bianca, you gotta, you gotta be loyal. You gotta, you gotta keep those legs closed. But with my cousins, they're like, here are like a sack full of condoms. Like, <laughs> go out and just taste the buffet of pussy that's out there. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Like, and then like, what? Like, who are these whores that like are there? Like, are we separated? Like, here are the ones that are gonna be good, and you're gonna marry. And these are the bitches that are gonna suck your dick from the back. Like, this is where you learn to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, that I think, pile of hoes. I think my father and I had one sex-related conversation. I was four words into it before he was like, uh, shouldn't you be talking to your mom about this? <laughs> <laughs> so I never, so. I, didn't, I never had the sex talk. Did anybody ever have the sex Not talk? Not with the family, no. I did, no. Yeah. I did with the computer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a computer and then... Giggling um, babies. <laughs> no, I, my, mine was, and don't get, don't think in the gutter, a priest who <laughs> taught that sex ed class. I'm like, oh. why is he teaching me this? Mine was... And because he's very experienced with it in all the wrong way. Yeah, mine Come was on, like, Jesse, don't light have them sex. candles. I was don't have sex, don't have sex, don't have sex. By the way, I'm on birth control. Are you having sex? Yes. Um, that's the end of that conversation. Yeah, I, I think I mean, mine may, mostly came from just watching reruns of like 90s family sitcoms. That was my sex talk, <laughs> which explains a lot about I hope who Bill I am Cosby now. Cosby didn't but, teach you yeah. the sex talk. I never watched. The, I, I wasn't allowed to watch the Cosby Show. Of course, was, you yeah, that, yeah. There was a lot, a lot of foresight from my. Parents when are we there. getting the race <laughs> issues? <laughs> well, but, but before we move on, um, to just want to get a few factual things into this particular topic. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Go for it, Pat. We need uh, it. Yeah, just actually, you know, just to throw a few things out there, you know, it, it is telling that, uh, you know, sex education doesn't exist, uh, you know, just within the bubble of sex itself. It plays into a heck of a lot of different social issues across the country, even to the point where you can map, um, you know, prevalences of male to female rape and HIV transmission and teen pregnancy to areas that utilize only abstinence only. Um, such as sex education or don't even do sex education as part of a uh, public curriculum. Um, and HIV is a wonderful example of that because it's a eminently preventable disease that we've known about for 40 years now. We know exactly how to prevent it. And since the rise of abstinence-only education in the richest nation on the planet, we have seen HIV transmissions skyrocket over the last 15 years. Well, thank you to Pat for taking the romance out of sex education. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, do, I do want to move on. This is actually kind of kind of a nice segue. Uh, you guys were already kind of mentioning the role of religion on people's lives. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the separation of church and state, something that has literally been argued about for hundreds of years. Um, the way to kind of want to frame this conversation is... I want to talk a little bit about County Clerk Kim Davis. Uh, for those oh, of you that, yeah. that, that, that were not familiar, <laughs> it was a uh, it was a county clerk that uh, basically refused to issue marriage licenses to same sex couples. There was a viral video about her, um, and then from there things got even crazier. Um, she was uh, arrested briefly, um, basically for not doing her job. Uh, but then there was a lot of religious America that 
came to her defense and supported her. Uh, most notably, presidential candidate Mike Huckabee kind of took her side, um, and she was kind of viewed as this hero among a certain part of American society. Uh, so I want to kind of ask you guys, how do you think Kim Davis should be viewed in the bigger picture of things? She shouldn't be viewed at all. Okay. Like, like you, you, you have a job, you don't do your job, you get fired. That's the end of the story. There's no, there's no fanfare, there's no plot twist. Like, you don't do your job, you get fired. Like, the only thing, like, that's it. I don't understand why that got blown so out of proportion. Um, like, but that's my opinion. Do, you, do, you, uh, do any of you think that there's ever a situation in which it's okay to not do your job or really do anything based on philosophical reasons? Is that an okay way to protest? I mean, uh, I it, it it depends on how strong you feel about it because I think there's a certain line between you know what you feel versus what's good for the rest of us. You know what I mean? And that line has been blurred for so long. I mean, she's thinking you know this is what's good for her and for the rest of the country, while the rest of us agreed like no, no, we, we listen, just do your job as Bianca said, just do your job and simple as that. And then I think we need to find a point where we can reestablish that line so we can know so people can't overstep it and said no 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 this is what society wants when in fact no no it's not what we don't want okay amber i think she took um she took it as an opportunity to push her religion on multiple people um it was just like this very simple way like and maybe she didn't see it that way but she's like no this is right and that's just like someone that comes to your door and tries to be like hey listen to me and you're like i'm pretty kind of those people like um generally like i'm like okay like i get it and i'm like you're not it's a little invasive. I'm trying to listen to rap music, <laughs> but I'll listen. Um, but I think it, it, she took it as an opportunity to be like, no, like I know in my heart that this is right. And like, you are allowed to have your own religion, but like in her doing that, she was like overpowering like everyone else's like religious beliefs, you know, in a bad way. Gotcha. Yeah. Tisa, you want to weigh in on that? Uh, about the whole like do your job thing. I mean, like, that's when it gets in like morals versus ideals. Like, you know, when fear of Trump becomes president, I'm not going to help him like round up the Jews if that's what he hires me to do. Uh, but no, like, is I that, think. Is that the latest thing he said? I can't even keep No, going. no. Is that what we're doing now? It is now. Yeah. It is now. Now that it's out there Black on the check. internet. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, like, like Amber said, and pretty much everyone here, yeah, she's imposing her views on others. And the thing is with the people that do that, I don't think they really feel that way. I don't think they understand. Like, it's like you can't argue reason with them. You're not going to change their mind. Okay. It's just the way they think. It's ingrained. Yeah. Is Which there, is I mean, depressing. Is there, like, do you guys envision any way that we can compromise with people that already have that ingrained in them what what i guess what's the solution here in the situation of kim she could quit that's the easiest solution yeah because they me. can't fire her she's elected that's what i wanted to right she, she would leave. have to be impeached yeah. and then yeah. she Which can difficult like she can like hulk it down the street and try to get like doo, 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 doo. But that's as far she, as i'm concerned <laughs> she won't be on tv anymore though <laughs> <laughs> that's what she wants uh, we need to get her to sleep with her maid. <laughs> a really hot maid in there. Let's get a hot maid. <laughs> Send her to Kentucky. I, I I did see that like someone made a porn parody of Kim Davis. Oh, There's a porn parody. It's, of it's out there somewhere. We're looking real deep yeah. for porn. If you found that, <laughs> it's not. I that always hard do. Porn. I always like to dig deep. It's like, um, can we please find that and watch it right now? It's also on like that. If we saw you like this, so you may like Kim <laughs> Davis. <laughs> um, uh, sh shifting focus is here. I mean, as long as we're talking about porn, why not? Why not move to this direction? Let's talk about women's rights a little bit. Um, <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. To kind of to kind of fr frame this conversation, um, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the campaign of Hillary Clinton, uh, who obviously has some great potential to be the first female president of the United States, um, and. What she's been asked in debates before, what you would do differently as president, uh, she's even kind of called attention to, I'm paraphrasing her, but basically what would be more different than having the first female president? Um, so my question to you is, how do you think Hillary's presidency or potential presidency would be affected as being the first female president? Bianca, you look like you want to say something. 
I have it. Um, I have issues with Hillary Clinton, and it's not that the fact that she has a vagina. It's not the fact that she stayed with her husband after he licked another vagina. Okay. My let's, issue. Let's focus on her vagina for a second. Though. <laughs> My <laughs> issue with Hillary Clinton. I, I, I could. I want to back her so bad, but she is trying to because be she's s- a woman. I, I no, because I can agree with her. Like I've like watched debates like when in passing when my mom is like watching them on the kitchen television, and I could agree with that. I can mess like I can, like went to that but she's trying to be too relatable and mm. by relatable i mean she's trying to get the hood to fuck with her and i <laughs> fucking hey she made her fucking campaign sign the kwanzaa colors she dabbed she, on she, ellen it is so it makes my stomach turn she, so if she can stop doing all that shit then i I, I can talk about Hillary Clinton, but that's all I'm saying on Hillary Clinton. She's trying to be a cool grandma pretty much at this Fuck point. Her. Can I ask like a white girl question? What is dabbed besides like weed? <laughs> it's like basically it, right? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You just do that. It's like a dance. I don't know. I don't, I've right, never done it. all I needed to know. I I'm wasn't even sure. I'm I have I'm, no pertinent statistics relating to what this may or may not be. <laughs> I'm guessing that was wrong based on Bianca's reaction. Um, In terms of her potential presidency or whatever like i just think like i don't give a fuck what you guys think about her or not like i don't give really really care fuck a ton about politics but what she's doing is like already hard like it's already difficult like just being a woman and being the only fucking one out there just being like i have boobs but like also i'm smart it's like it's it's hard anyway like the last thing i would do like i you couldn't pay me and like educate me enough to like try to do what she's doing because fuck that i would have just stayed with my slutty husband and like called it a day (laughs) <laughs> uh that that actually that that ties really well into the next thing i want to talk about and it's the idea of a glass ceiling um which is basically the idea that basically across the board women are only able to get so high in whatever career they're in um you pointed out that hillary clinton seems to kind of be facing that um on the republican side we had carly fiorina who is kind of just disappeared recently i did not even know who that, that sounds was. like a fairy exactly. yeah <laughs> Um, but I, I she's the lady that bankrupted Hewlett Packard. Yeah, I know. That's she's the a, only relevant thing about her. She's a <laughs> real <cute>? piece. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but talking about this idea of a glass ceiling, um, obviously this seems like a real problem. Um, but is this the type of problem that's going to resolve itself over time as we adapt to society, or should we be taking action to somehow account for this and help women get higher up in society? I'll actually open with the guys on this. Of course you do. <laughs> oh, you just, you know, I, I don't know if you mean that. I'll, I'll, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm speechless at the moment. <laughs> but I will uh, spew out opinions. Pat, get ready. <laughs> I mean, uh, the glass ceiling thing, uh, yeah, I think there, uh, there definitely is one. I mean, I mean, she, she's, I mean how many times is she, is she came close um, when she was uh, running, I mean, how many years ago? I think I, I can't think at the top of my head. Pat, help me out. Like 2012 was, uh, or 2008, I think it was, when she was trying to run against Obama, when they for the Democratic uh, candidacy. Yes. Yes. Okay, I've just made sure. You know, and she got so close and then knocked out. And like, I know a lot of shows and parodies, they're making fun of the idea how she's coming so close and she's gonna get knocked out by Bernie Sanders now. You know, and it seems like she's ca- she's coming this close every time, and uh, it's it's painful to watch at the same time because you do see that she wants to try. She you see, you see that her heart's into it, and you see sometimes, in my opinion, when I watch some of the debates. Uh, they're more at her sometimes, uh, you know, like they'll like let, uh, you know, the other two go when they answer a question and get their applause break. But then when she says something, they'll kind of rebuttal like, oh, really? That's what you said. Well, here in this uh, issue of Times, you said this that con- contradicts what you just said just now. And uh, so, I mean, definitely she has a much uh, harder and rougher road that she needs to travel on to get to where men have gotten to uh, in the last 200 years. Kind of looking at that in, in a broader context, though, of just women in general, um, do you guys think that, I mean, is this a problem that will sort itself out, or what can we be doing to help women out here? Bianca? Um, I think uh, one of the issues is um, men, obviously, uh, <laughs> which is literally the antithesis of women, uh, men. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I think it's just an issue because uh, especially if we're at a workplace environment, it's just like we're not being considered 
Um, like even I work in a women friendly like store. Like my company, if I decided to get knocked up tomorrow, mm. like there's no maternity leave for me, uh, which is really strange. Um, but I just think if we stop seeing, one of the problems is seeing women as fragile beings and just a pair of tits and ass is one of the issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard horror stories of my friends that work in offices um, that said, like, their boss is like, hey, you want a promotion? How about you suck my dick? Whoa. So that's that's eight. That's um, something. But that's also something, as we talked about in other things as far as religion, it's ingrained in men that I am a man, I have a penis, so therefore I am greater. So I am owed everything. Suck my dick. <laughs> And I apologize if I'm slurring because I'm almost two beers in and I'm about to get another. (laughs) If someone could get me a beer or I will get one myself shortly. Tony, get me, how many beers are out there? Never mind. I will take a rolling rock at this point. In addition to recording this episode, Mm. Tony has also been our bartender. Thank you. (laughs) Um, In terms of what um, Bianca was saying, if we have time, I'm sorry. No, go for it. Okay, cool. So... I do. I I don't know what would fix it. There's no being like just treat them right because it's like and then they're almost like but we are like we give them sandwiches sometimes like I don't know like (laughs) there are businesses that are doing it fairly. There are businesses that like truly try and like kind of look at that pay. I think. Um, Mm -hmm. I also think if we don't touch it, I think women are just empowering themselves more anyhow. They are starting their own businesses. They don't need to. um, Great. Thank you. Um, (laughs) uh, But. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. I just think I just think that like maybe yeah, if, if maybe if it's not touched, I just think society is changing to the point where, or at least in, I, I just see more and more empowered women o- over like the weeks, like literally, like I just I meet more awesome badass bitches every day, and I'm just like I feel like eh, thanks, Bianca, definitely definitely you, um, but I feel like I have hope in that just women will just overcome the shit on their own, like in a way. Gotcha. But, um, it also makes me think, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I'll wrap this up quickly, um, but women also have to stop getting in their own way um, by saying, well, we want women, but we don't want these kind of women. Like, oh, we don't want those slutty bitches over there. Like, they're slutty bitches. We don't want them in our women party. Slutty bitches. I don't want these trans women because they used to have dicks, and that's gross. Like, we need to come together as a unit of our um, trans sisters. Um, uh, women who you are sex workers and come together as one. Uh, that uh, mentioning the idea of kind of social change and also the idea of coming together, um, and this will be kind of the last thing, and we're getting close to the end here. Um, I do just want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the comments that uh, Donald Trump has said recently <laughs> and the response to those comments. Um, basically, uh, to to say it very quickly, he's basically attacked uh, blacks, Latinos, and Muslims all together in his campaign um, to mixed results. Um, There are people that love him for it. There are people that hate him for it. Um, Just kind of a quick question to all of you. Um, Again, how did we end up here? Why do you think we're moving in this direction where this kind of new age of American racism is acceptable on on a mass market like that? Jesse, do you want to kick that off? I think it's uh, he's appealing to people's hate. And he's allowing to give these people a platform to hate. I mean, before, you, you know, you, you don't run a campaign and you, there was never, a, a, you know, someone openly saying, oh, you can hate these people. You can hate these people. Well, he's coming out and he's saying over a microphone and then he's got his supporters going, yeah, we hate this group. We hate that group. So by him opening the doors to it, he allows this all to, you know, just come on out. And it's been backed up for years. We never had a candidate that allowed us to open up about our hate and he's allowed so is, us is, to do is that. it almost like a, like national like catharsis of like people being able to agree with him or disagree with him i think it could be to, to agree with him i okay. think see so what do you think about donald trump in general or like in like for the question <laughs> for i don't like, know if we have time you, for you, you know, to talk about uh, him in like general. romantically yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 i, I hope i have his hair at his age uh i think no. you're close already so right there, <laughs> settle, settle right now uh no i think uh like jesse said with the appealing to the hate thing i think that's partially true but i think part of what it is is 
And I don't know how many South Park fans are watching. But that episode, <laughs> Where My Country Gone. People yeah. have like a feeling like that they're yeah. being left out now. It's not my white middle class show anymore. Yeah. Or it's going away from that, which is, in my opinion, good. We're all becoming, you know, I'm not, and I'm not, I feel like you're going to argue with me on this. I'm not saying we're all equal. I know that we're not. <laughs> I'm about um, to say, if you drop all lives matter, we'll, we'll fight on the way. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. But I'm saying I feel like we are moving slowly towards the direction where we are becoming more equal, not as fast as we need to be and all that stuff. And do it's, we have it's, time to discuss the Black Lives Matter movement? Oh, that's that's a whole different I don't want, okay. I'm not. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll have no, a rematch between the two of you. I, I, I feel like, uh, and that scares a lot of like baby boomer white people. That society is becoming more accepting. Of yeah, and it, they they feel like, yeah. oh, what happened to the good old days yeah. where you could make racist jokes on TV yeah. and say faggot and stuff, and you yeah. can't do that anymore, and it scares them, and that's what it's yeah. Um, no, I I just I just think he's almost tap he's tapping into this uh, like very intense kind of hate hateful crowd. He just he's found his niche, and he's like, I mean, he I, he clearly is that person, and he's. He's thriving off of it. I think he's becoming more hateful with this like powerful like thing. The guy's never been told no. He's always had a ton of money. Like he's like, oh, I have a ton of money. We can all hate shit together. And then I don't know. Like his, the videos of his rallies like just blow my mind. They're I'm like, scary. I can't believe people are there. Do you do you think his success is coming from that? There's actually a base for that in American society, or it's just that the base he's appealing to is the most like outspoken of all the bases. Like, it's basically you get the loudest people to yell for you, and it looks like you're doing pretty well in the polls. Sure. No, absolutely. I just, um, it, it's a bunch of very passionate people, that's for sure. I'm, they're passionate. Um, they, I mean, those are their viewpoints, and that's whatever, but yeah. maybe not. Um, Bianca, what do you think about Donald Trump? Um, this goes back to, like, you can, like you said, like, you can see his rallies, and as I mentioned before, like, that five four Supreme Court ruling. That's mm. the four guys. Like that's mm. those are people. Like yeah. we live next door to them. <laughs> and these are people that believe. Like literally, a guy in Newark who's like, "Why does this Muslim bitch get to wrap this scarf around her head? I can't wear my Buckeye hat." Like these are these fucking people, and they're right there. They're going to these rallies. They're throwing mm. money at them, and. This is a travesty. Um, there's nothing like I like every time I see something about Donald Trump, I'm like, please be an onion article. But it's real. And this whole um, campaign has been an onion article, basically. <laughs> yeah. But it's real. Um, and people are like, I'm gonna vote for him because it'll be a big ass joke. I'm like, I'm just no. I'm just hoping like he just Andy Kaufman all of us. Like just <laughs> well, eventually he just comes out and says, Gotcha guys. That's one of those things is that like, yes, he is rallying the support. But I don't think he believes in a lot of what he's saying. I think he's playing a game. I think he knows what he's doing. No, not like a fun game, but like a this is how I'm going to become president game. He used to donate to Democrats. That was a thing that he yeah. would do. His tax plan, and I feel like Pat will be able to verify me on this. What was like a 10% flat tax on like the top 1% or 10% of the country or something? It was in the 90s that he introduced this idea that would have like erased the national deficit. He used to... Be very Democrat. I think he's playing a game, and he understands. I just what he's like doing. want it to like. Oh, yeah. I just want him to get elected, and then so we like, can all he, learn a like, lesson. Like, no, he takes off his mask, and it's just Obama. So we get four more years of Obama. I mean, I, I think just to interject a few things. Um, you know, an interesting um, observation to keep in mind here is that we are in the primary season, and uh, overall, Americans don't really participate in primary elections. The turnout is much lower for the primaries than it is for the general election itself. And the thing is, is that for both parties, only the most extreme people uh, tend to vote in the primaries because only the most politically active people vote in the primaries, and those also tend to be the most extreme members of either party. Well, you scared the shit out of me now. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> it, it's one of the things that leads into the fact that you, know, you have a lot of moderates sitting around when it comes to general election time and saying, like, there's no good option. Like, this one's too left for me. This one's too right for me. It's like, well, because, yeah, none of you voted in the primaries, doofuses. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and also, you know, you, someone, I forget who, uh, brushed up against it a moment ago. You do have to wonder how many, you know, Trump, he's, he's a, a shit stain. But you have to <laughs> wonder how many of his followers are quite as uh, ravenous as the loudest of them. Because we are in a relatively uh, scary time in a... Uh, recent American history. The, the recovery uh, is going slowly. 
Um, industry is not bouncing back. Uh, oil is not the solid place to invest your retirement money or to find a relatively low skilled job uh, anymore. Uh, we're realizing that you know we can't trust uh, the the image of the storybook police officer uh, that we used to have when we were little kids. Um, so it, it's a very, very loud and very, very scary time in American history. And you have to wonder how much of that is driving um, you know some of those huge numbers that he's racking up. If you ran for office, I would vote for you based on that speech. <laughs> I think all of, all of us would. Um, I just have I just have one more question for you guys, and I'm just looking for a, you know one to two word answer here. Um, based on kind of everything we talked about tonight, or even anything we didn't talk about uh, socially, what is one thing that you would like to see change, evolve, or become more acceptable in American society over the next several years? Jesse, I'll open that up with you. Uh, just treating, just treating people nice anymore. Just being nice to society and understanding we live in it, so respect it. Cecil, we need socialized health care. Amber, um, I'd say the lesbian, gay, trans community they could use some respect. And Bianca, S- stop blue on black violence. All right. Well, we're at that time uh, where I'm going to have. Pat weigh in here and uh, kind of announce who he thinks is the the filibuster champion of this episode. <laughs> um, you know, actually, uh, we we didn't get into a whole lot of uh, statistics or uh, you know soundbite uh, sort of stuff uh, this time around. Unlike our last episode, where we had a lot of screaming and yelling, we especially had someone who's no longer with us, <laughs> <laughs> throwing out a lot of statistics. Free Dusty. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, it was, uh, we, we, we focused on, you know, gun violence and the economy and very quantifiable things uh, last time around, whereas this time we, we did focus on things that aren't really quite as quantifiable um, and uh, things that were actually, you know, very, very personal uh, for, for some of our, our panelists. And that's why this evening I'm going to have to give it to Bianca um, for her, especially on uh, women's rights and... Um, Initially, in the very, very beginning of the uh, the podcast, um, we first touched off on LGBT issues for your very personal um, and very impassioned defense of some pretty important issues. So, Aww. all right, well, Bianca, on tonight's show, then you get the last word. Uh, this is your filibuster moment. Uh, you can say whatever you'd like, and none of us will try to interrupt you. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just go over some things that I um, we didn't go over earlier. Um, as far as LGBT rights, um, marriage does not equal mean equal. Like just because like gays have the right to marry does not mean like oh it's suddenly equal now. We live in live in this fantasy land. No, you can still get kicked out of your place for being gay in certain states. You can still get fired from being gay in certain states. So it's still something. I'm not even out of the closet. Hi, mom. I'm not even <laughs> out of the closet, and I'm terrified to come out of the closet because my mom unfortunately is one of those four out of um, five, um, four out of 10 people that if she has a front, but if you talk to her in private, like she has some very safe, some inflammatory things to say about gay people. Um, as far as sexuality and reproductive rights, it's my vagina, I should be able to do whatever the fuck I want with it. <laughs> if I wanna put firecrackers in it, I'll do so. Um, it was actually a very big issue with me and my ex because I was very, very pro-choice. He was very, very not. Um, basically saying like, hey, if you got pregnant, we're going to have a baby. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. So um, I believe you should not be forced to um, have a child. If you want to use Planned Parenthood for abortion, you should be able to. That's my thought on that. Uh, Sexual education, uh, we need to teach consent. There's not enough consent um, teachings, apparently. Um, If you can see certain cases blowing up, like the Bill Cosby case. Also, on the Bill Cosby case, just because he played Cliff Huxtable a couple fucking years ago does not make him Jesus. <laughs> All right. Um, if he hurt women, he fucking hurt women. Um, as far as women's rights, I should be able to go out and fuck whoever I want, and that should be okay because guys are expected to do the same fucking thing. Um, so maybe I wanted a bag full of condoms for Christmas too, just like my cousins did. Um, <laughs> and. As far as um, something we didn't cover, though, the um, Black Lives Matter mo- Matters movement, it's not us trying to flip over barrels and start fires in the streets and say, 
Um, and it's also not us. Please, Mr. White Man, can you please not try to choke me out after I fucking get some cigarettes, sell cigarettes on the street? It's just saying we're demanding um, equality and we're demanding it now. Um, don't fucking kill us in the streets. And um, also don't, you know, think we're going to take this lightly. And one more issue I'm going to talk about. Um, trans rights. There are um, also, as far as Black Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, there are over a uh, overwhelming list of black trans women who got killed last year, uh, which you may or may not know, um, just for being trans, just because they wanted to live their truth. Um, and there's also um, even white trans women who got buried in a suit um, after they were attacked for being um, trans, got buried in a suit, and that's not their true identity, which isn't fair. So these are issues you should be looking into and supporting. And that is me angrily banging my pen because I am passionate and two beers in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to Bianca Moore. Thank you to the rest of our panelists. A uh, huge thank you to Pat Deering and Brian Doney also. I'm Griffin Browning. That's going to do it for the second episode of Filibusted. On the next episode, we're going to be discussing technology and its role in politics. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.